Urban Therapy with Sun Show. I said Urban Therapy with Sun Show. Y'all ready? Come on, let's get this day popping, man. Oh, good. We good. We good. Uh. And so we break it down now. Yeah, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Think it won't. Uh. And everything is going to be all right. And everything is going to be all right. The game tight. Today we talk about fleeing the scene or, or, or staying the reported. We sometimes you got to. Sometimes you have to weigh your options. Sometimes you have to weigh your options. Fleeing the scene of a crime or staying to report it. Have you ever had to witness a crime, a rule being broken, an infraction, a mistake? You saw somebody mess up something and or you it, or it was you and you had to decide what you was going to do. Yo, tell me what you're going to do. Is your crew. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to take a look at that today on the Daily Go Get Emism Show. Yeah, man. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a judgment call. Whether to flee the scene of a crime when you witness it or to report it. In some neighborhoods, for some people, the cops aren't always your friends. And it doesn't always have to involve the cops. Sometimes it can be more about about whoever you have to report it to. So it might be the owner of somebody. I mean, I'm sorry. It may it may be the owner of something or uh, somebody who was in charge of something. Whatever the case may be. Sometimes the decision to to uh, to spill the beans on what happened is not always as easy as people would like to make it out to be and that's word so i said so so sometimes you got to make a decision you got to make a decision whether you're gonna make a decision maybe you go cut it or you say what it be well that's what we're talking about today on the urban therapy with sun show whether to flee the scene of a crime or whether to report it you know sometimes it might be your boy or your girl or your or your people who uh who did the crime or who made the mistake or who messed something up. And it might be a better decision to just go ahead and sweep it under the rug. Maybe it ain't hurt nothing, but it can hurt something way more in the long run if you stayed along to stay stayed around and say something about it. So that's what we're going to talk about today on the daily daily the daily. I'm sorry. I'm sorry on the on the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. So let's get it popping. Urban Therapy with Sun, Sun 752. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. We do this every single Saturday from 1 p.m. till around 2.30-ish. And the reason that we say 2.30-ish is because sometimes it gets so heated that we just have to do a little OT on a Saturday. And it is a Saturday. This is the show where adults come out and play with other adults. We laugh, we cry, we argue, fuss and fight, go back and forth with each other, bust it up all crazy. We take an introspective look into our own personality to see the way that the universe projects us into this thing called the world and try to figure out this thing called life. I'm your host, Son752, a.k.a. Omar with the... And if you can't say Omar with the... Well, then you just say Omar with the R. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show all up in your area. I'm feeling like a real man should, and I hope y'all feel like real men and women should. Today on the Urban Therapy with Sun Show, we are talking about fleeing the scene of a crime or staying, um, or should I say versus staying to report it. Have you ever messed up something, did something wrong, maybe, maybe on purpose, or saw somebody, I'm sorry, maybe by mistake, or saw somebody do it seemingly on purpose, and you had to make the the decision about whether to spill the beans, flap the gums, open the box, tell, 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 go tell it on the mountain, or just be like, my name is Wes and I ain't in this mess. My name is Joe and I ain't seen that, yo. My name is Fred and I, that's dead. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. I'm David Ruffin. This word. Well, sometimes, sometimes it comes down to that. Sometimes it comes down to whether you should speak on something that you've seen or should you just kind of let it go, let it flow, act like you don't know. You ain't seen nothing. You know how it go. 
Sometimes it's not at all. It's not always as easy as seeing some. You know, when you see violence, when you witness violence, that's one of those things where you really have to make a decision about whether you are going to report it. Sometimes it can come back on you, and that's not to say that you might be a coward or a scaredy cat or whatever. But sometimes, sometimes it might be you might feel like it's okay. For you to take the hit or you to take the heat, it might be okay for you to take the heat, but maybe there are other people that are involved that might not be able to protect themselves as well or handle the situation as well as you might be able to handle the situation. So you have to make the decision about whether you should go ahead and and say something about it or not. For example, for example, let's say you were on your way out or you, you you just happened to be looking out your window or you heard gunshots, gunshots in an area where you were. And uh, you saw somebody get shot at or you saw somebody get shot. Would you 100% guarantee that you would call the cops or speak to the cops, cooperate when they came around. Would you? You saw the young man or the or, or the woman or whoever get shot. I know this is a this is a sticky s- subject because a lot of times it might depend on who did the shooting. Who did the shooting? Would I tell? Would I say something? Is this a good situation to involve myself in? Maybe, maybe you don't feel, I'm sorry, maybe you don't fear retaliation by the shooter. Or maybe they were shooting at each other. Maybe they, maybe the two parties involved were shooting at each other. Maybe you don't know or didn't see who started shooting first. And maybe you don't know the reason that either one of them was shooting, but you saw this, you saw the sh- shots, right? You heard the shots ring out and you saw the shots. Do you pick up the phone call 911 or do you hope that somebody else saw it and they pick up, pick up the phone and call 911? Would it depend on, would it depend on if somebody got seriously hurt or, or whether, somebody or whether somebody was innocent that got shot versus somebody that's about that street life. It can depend. What's going on? Stacy White, thanks for coming on through. Appreciate me some. You and my brother, my brother Ansel Jones is in the house. What's going on, my brother Ansel Jones? He asked, would you testify in court? You've already, you are a cooperating witness if you would testify in court. We're talking about, would you talk to the boys in blue? I said, would you talk to the boys in blue? I said, would you talk to the boys in I said, would you talk to the boys in blue? Or would you mind your business? That's what you do. Would you talk to the boys in blue? I said, would you talk to the boys in blue? I said, would you talk to the boys in blue? Or would you let it go, let it fly? It's not about I, I, I'm not saying nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I'm like David Ruffin. I ain't singing today. I ain't singing today. I ain't singing today. No, no, no way. It's a decision that you might have to make. It might be a decision that you have to make. You might have to make that decision in order to protect somebody who was in violation or to protect yourself. You know, just like Ansel was asking, would you testify in court? Well, the shorter, the the shorter question is, would you report what you saw? Well, I saw, I saw Skeet shooting at Dave. Who? Skeet. Well, Well, what's it? Do you know his real name? No, I don't know his real name. And I don't really know him, but I, I've seen him around the way, and I've heard people, you know, call him Skeet. That's his name. I only know him by Skeet because you know they're going to ask you, well, what does Skeet look like? 
Well, Skeet is about five eleven. He wears his hair short, like a, like a um, not a bald hairstyle, but you know, like a, a a, a short fade um, type of hairstyle with waves in it. You know, he's about maybe he's not a big guy. He's under under two hundred pounds. You know, he weighs, um, if, if I had to guess, maybe he weighs about one hundred and eighty pounds. Okay. All right. Uh brown skin is he black male? Yeah, he's like uh he's darker. He's dark skin. He's a dark skin. Dark skin guy. You might give up the details on Skeet. Skeet was shooting the day. But you might say, I ain't telling on Skeet. Skeet no Skeet no boo. Skeet works for boo. And I'm not trying to explain the boo why I, why I I, I told told on Skeet shooting at Dave. Dave and Skeet they gonna have to work that out. He was shooting at he was shooting at Dave, but he ain't hit Dave. Not from what I saw, Dave got away. Skeet was steady shooting. Bow 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 bow. Skeet is not such a good shot, and nobody else got shot. How do you know nobody else got shot? Well. They ran. I saw him in my front, uh, in my front window, and they ran to the back. So I looked in the back. I ain't hear nobody scream. I ain't hear nobody. You know, Dave got away. He hopped the fence. He got away. Skeet gonna have to shoot him another day. So you know, you didn't necessarily flee the scene, but you opted not to tell. You opted not to report what you saw. You're not lying by omission. You're minding your business today. You don't need Boo coming to knock on, you know, asking who 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 told on Skeet. Boo and Skeet, they got their thing going on. They got a little thing. I'm I and that ain't none of my business. What what Skeet and Boo do, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't know how Dave is 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 tied up in it. But one thing is for sure. If they want to know about Skeet and Boo, they're going to have to ask somebody besides me. Maybe you. But if they ask me, they ain't going to learn nothing. Because I'm not singing. I'm not David Ruffin. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's street stuff. That's street stuff. You might not want to get involved in those street stuff. Well, it might change if it was somebody that you were close to. It might be different if it was like if it, if it was like your your brother or your cousin or your your good friend or your neighbor or 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 a young person that shouldn't be involved in that kind of stuff. That might influence your decision to report the crime. Oh no, I'm saying something about this. We got I, I got neighbors. I got um I got elders. I got senior citizens that live on my block. And I can't be putting I can't be letting nobody put their put their their lives in jeopardy. We got kids. We got kids that be playing on 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 the street. Uh-uh. We can't be having shooting and all of that kind of stuff. You know, messing around in in, in, in somebody's life or or, or cause somebody to get seriously hurt who don't have nothing to do with that. Uh -uh. Different. If you know that Dave, Dave and Skeet are sort of mixed up in the same thing, and Dave and, and Boo is, and um, Boo is Dave, uh, and Boo is Skeet's boss. You might say, "Well, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that." I'm gonna have to look the other way. I'm not going. I, that's not. That's none of my business. But if you see little tink tink, little tink tink on the block while they were shooting, you might say, uh, "Wait a minute, it's time for me to talk a little bit." I don't like what I saw, and I'm not having it. And whoever don't like it, don't like it. But then, but then, you know. You also you also may have to take your family into consideration. You know whether Skeet and Boo 
are the type that retaliate or whether they knuckleheads, whether they knuckleheads around the way and call and will call anybody who who reports them doing dirt a snitch. And, you know, snitches get stitches. Well, what would you do? What would you do? We might do things differently. We might have to do things differently. Ansel says, what happened to nosy people on the block that, that told parents everything you did? Yeah, they might have been asleep this day. Maybe you just happened to be getting up to go, go pee or something like that. And you heard it. The newsy neighbors. Miss Sarah. Miss Tina. Miss Janice. Miss Jocelyn. They just happened to not be up. They didn't see nothing today. To, or tonight. They didn't see nothing. They was in the house watching the stories. I don't know. Whatever the case may be. They wasn't, they wasn't available to witness what I saw today or what you saw today. So what's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know, but this might be the difference between you fleeing the scene of the crime or failing to report something versus, you know, stepping up to the plate and being proactive to make sure that the authorities the authorities know what happened who who were the actors involved and what's going on that's what we're talking about today on the urban therapy with sun show uh the urban therapy with sun show uh, ur urban yeah what uh. okay i got another scenario for y'all All right. All right. Since the first the first example we were talking about, if you saw somebody else and whether you would and what you would do in that situation. Let's try this one. Have you ever damaged somebody's car? Have you ever been in a parking lot and parked too, too close to somebody's car or scraped them or opened your car door and and then it's somebody else's car door. Oops. You know, maybe you wasn't paying attention today. You opened up the car door and, open, and you opened up the car door too hard. It dented the car next to you. Do you write out a note with your insurance information or whatever? Or oh, well, not your insurance information, with your personal information to tell the, that person to get in touch with you? Or do you say, uh... First of all, this is a parking lot. I was I was just running into Walmart to, to, to grab a couple of things, but I think I'm going to park somewhere different. What would you do? This has happened to a lot of people. You damaged somebody's car. Didn't mean to. Or you were parking, you were parking, and um, you bumped somebody's uh, car and chipped their bumper. Trying to get out of a parking space. You misjudged it. You misjudged it. Pressed on the gas too hard. Chipped somebody's bumper. Do you leave your personal information? So they can get in touch with you. So they can get in touch with your, your, uh, your insurance company. So they can get their car fixed. Or do you move your car? Do you rationalize it like, well, nobody saw me do this. And shoot, nobody left a note when they damaged my car. I'd have had my car keyed. Ain't nobody say nothing. Uh, ain't, ain't nobody uh, admit the key in my car. Denting my car. Messing up my car. Damaging my car. Messing up my paint. Is that just something that happens to people who drive? What would you do? 
Now it's on you. We're not talking about Skeet shooting at Dave, who works for Boo. Well, Skeet, who works for Boo, shooting at Dave. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about you. Have you ever damaged somebody's vehicle? Have you ever damaged somebody's car? And if you did damage somebody's property, like their car, like their fence, so, or something else going on with their house, and nobody saw you do it, what do you do? You ain't got to talk about it right here. I know that some of y'all been in these situations. I know I have myself. You know, there have been times when I, let's just say I got a little too close to a car. Let's, I, I'm not sure if I always did the right thing, the right thing. Sometimes the situation that I was in, the right thing would have brought, brought about the wrong result. It wasn't, it wasn't going to be a good look. It was not going to be a good look. Decisions. We are the decisions that we make. And the decisions that we make have a lot to do with who we are. What we've been taught. How we've been conditioned. How we've been brought up, raised. So what about you? What about us? Make sure y'all hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. I'm your host, Sun752, and we are talking about flee the scene of a crime or stay to report it. What would you do? What have you done? Huh? Huh? If y'all would like to call in and talk about this topic, if this is something that you can relate to, holler at me. And the number to call is area code 319-527-6199. That's the number to call. I said a 319-527-6199. Yes, 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 y'all. I said a three one nine five two seven six one nine nine. Yeah, get on the line. I said a three one nine five two seven six one nine nine. Yeah, get your shine, baby. Uh, get your shine, baby. Three one nine five two seven six one nine nine, baby. Yeah. Sometimes you have to make that decision, love. Make that decision, my friend. Hey, my friend, you had to make the decision. You messed us on a car. You're going to talk. You're going to tell on yourself. Ansel says, "I'm not reporting Jake State Farm. Um, um, reporting Jake from State Farm and Flow Progressive was 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 off that day. You know, I ain't even mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm not even sure if I want to be mad at you. It happens." It happens. I see fresh scratches and 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 um, dents on, on, on my cars all the time. It's it's the nature of the game, you know. When we were kids, playing on the block, playing football on the block, playing baseball on the block, playing you know putting up a crate and running ball on the block. Cars got damaged. And that was back in the days when cars could take more damage. When cars were hard back in the day. Straight steel. They ain't like today. They what all that fiberglass, all that old, I don't know, what, what plastic? Back in the 70s and 80s, cars were made with steel. So they could take a they could take a football. Even to the windshield. Windshields were were tough back in the day. Now, a little pebble or something. Have you peeped it? A little pebble or something, you know, uh, um, hit your windshield now. That shit crack. And then that long crack goes, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're working with. Nowadays, it's so easy to damage a car. And you see the way they do auto body nowadays. If you've ever witnessed how they do auto body these days versus how they did it back in the day. Back in the day, they used a the blowtorch. They pulled it, they pulled the stuff out with the hooks. Back in the day, auto body was an art. Now I don't, it's an art now. But it's just like it's like crayon and clay. All that bondo. All that bond do. So, yeah. So, yeah. You damn it. So, our our, our uh, friends back in the day, our friends back in the day, was somebody that we probably would 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 protect. Yeah. My man Jay, my man Jay, he broke somebody's window. We all ran. We all ran. You know, Mr. Johnson mean. And he going to tell our parents we're going to get in trouble. All for playing a friendly little game of baseball. Jay hit the ball. The ball hit the window. We all hit the road. We was out. Yeah. When we're younger, that's when we learn. That's when we learn whether we're going to stay in there and, uh, and take the heat for whatever we've done. Or whether you're going to get on up out of there. Holler back. I don't know. The Lord must have broke the window. The Lord dented the car. Sometimes sometimes it's, it's a time to do the right thing. And sometimes the right thing ain't the right thing for the right time right then and there. Sometimes it ain't about doing all the right things. It's a mistake. It might have been a mistake that you made. It might have been a mistake that somebody else made. But right now, right now ain't the time for us to handle that situation. Right now, right now, we're not doing that. Right now, it's time for us to, it's time for us to get on that route. We go, we, we out of here. We're not staying around to report nothing right now. We got to go. Pick up your stuff and go. None of us saw nothing. No, you don't know what we did last summer. I went down south to my I went down south to my um um to my people's crib last summer. You ain't no, I ain't do nothing last summer. What you know? What you know, baby? So, yeah, uh, depending on who you see do something and depending on the severity of the infraction, the mistake, the, the crime, you might not say nothing. I got another scenario for y'all, and this one is kind of deep. Domestic violence. Domestic violence. If you witness your neighbor's. Yeah, let's just say neighbors. If you witness your neighbors fighting, a man is abusing his wife or his girlfriend, or maybe, maybe it's hard for you to say that it's abuse because they actually fighting. Like, like his woman was like like Tina in the limo, like Tina Turner in the back of the limo. She wasn't she wasn't ever taking those hits. But they was fun, fighting. They, they was rumbling. You know, they, they be getting it on. You could, you could always say that a man is never supposed to put his hands on a woman 
but you saw him put his hands on his woman. And you also saw his woman put her hands back right, right back on him. Like, no, I ain't take I, I grew up with a bunch of brothers and I know how to I know how to fight back, hit back, or whatever. You ain't just gonna be whooping my ass. You ain't just gonna be whooping on me. Well, what would you do? What would you do? Do you uh are you quick to if you see a man and a woman embroiled, embroiled, I'm sorry, embroiled in, in combat, would you do you quickly get on the phone and call the cops? Or do you watch the fight for a little while and make sure that it doesn't get out of hand or nobody gets really, really hurt? You might look, you might figure that's yeah, that's your business. Listen. Um, they just moved on the block. And when they when, as soon as they moved on the block, you knew they was going to be trouble. But they've been fighting since they moved on the block. They've been throwing hands ever since they moved on the block. They drink, they smoke, they get high, they fight, make up, act like nothing ever happened. They be fighting again. Or maybe you live in an apartment building with them. And you hear them getting it in on a regular basis. They argue and fussing and fighting. Argue and fussing and fighting. Argue and fighting fussing. Argue and fussing and fighting. I, I, argue, fussing and fighting. It's really messed up. It's not exciting, but it has gone down. And you are really feeling like a clown. Or looking at them like they clowns. Listen, I mean, what would you do? Some of y'all grew up with this. Did you call? Yeah, I mean, you might be looking at it. I, I mean, listen, I mean, just keep it a buck. You might be looking at it like, look, I ain't never called the cops on my daddy. I ain't calling the cops on my neighbors. Yeah, they work it out. They work it out. Look, I, I, I mean, uh, I don't participate in that. I don't um, have any domestic violence in my repertoire. I don't get down like that, but um, people do. And 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 if you call the cops. If you call the cops on her, she ain't going to appreciate it. I mean, if you call the cops on him, she ain't going to appreciate it. She's going to tell them that, no, everything is okay. Or or if he gets locked up, she's going to go get him. She's going to go right and bail him out or whatever. So why waste the time? Yep. So. So, yeah. What, what, what would you do? Because almost all of us have seen this scenario. Witnessing domestic violence. Do you mind your business? Do you look the other way? Do you make sure that that the fight is even fair? Do you make sure like even if you know that he he slaps her around that he ain't going to kill her? What do you do? <laughs> what do you what, what do you do? How do you handle that situation? It's a sensitive situation, and I recognize that. I recognize that for a lot of people, that ain't funny. <laughs> It ain't cute. I recognize that some people have lost their lives over that. Or have seriously been hurt. I get it. But what would you do? What have you done? What's going to happen next time? Everything. Excuse me. Everything in life moves in progression. Everything in life progresses. It's not always a situation where something started out started out really, really bad and got worse. Sometimes things build up and they get worse as time goes on. Sometimes you can see the exact point of when things started to fall off or when things started to get really, really bad.
Stacey White says, if I was her, I would just buy him some shoes. What does that mean? What does that mean, Stacey? I, I don't I don't get that one. That's, you got me you got me ready to scratch my head on that one. I got nothing. You can help me out with that. I appreciate it. But yeah, domestic violence. You know, recognizing that it's a really sore and sensitive subject for some people. But yeah, what would you do? You call the cops. Is that a situation from your experience that requires getting the police involved? You know, with domestic violence, there's so much to consider. There really is. Stacey White says, you never heard of the old saying, don't buy a man a pair of shoes because he'll walk out and leave you. Oh, and domestic violence, no, that ain't that it don't work that way. In domestic violence situation, you can buy him all the shoes you want. He's staying. Abusers don't don't usually leave. They usually hang in there. They hang out. They chill out. They stay. And they want you to stay too. You ain't never going nowhere. But speaking of buying him some shoes, it might be the situation where he's the he's the sole provider of that household. So if he gets locked up because you call the cops or whatever, her and the kids might not be in such a good spot because she don't work. He does work. And just because he works, and just because he's the sole provider does not give him the green light to put his hands on him. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not meaning that at all. But what I'm saying is there might be blanket repercussions that go beyond him hitting her, her hitting back or taking the hit. Yeah, and I know, I know the you you shouldn't have kids around that that type of stuff. I know, but the kids might be just as used to it as mommy is, or daddy. If we're talking about a situation where uh, where the woman is abusive, but do you mind your mind your business? Keep an eye on it. Make sure it don't get too rough. Like, man, they be arguing and fighting right around, right around, just before they go to bed, it seems like. He comes home a little bit tipsy, drinks a little bit more. And then right around 11 o'clock midnight, they get to fussing and fighting and whatever. I hear some... Some some stuff get broken or moved around or thrown or whatever the case may be. Next thing you know, everything stops. You know, I don't know if she went upside his head with a frying pan or whatever, but he he was, you know, they, they get up the next day, they get up the next morning and, and wash, rinse, repeat. They continue, they repeat the whole the whole thing the next day. It might be a situation like that. Like, yeah, he put his hands on her. Can't deny that, but he ain't going to, he, he, evidently he ain't messing up that bad. You might have to mind your business on that one. You might have to take a, a back seat to that one. And, um, Peace and comfort to, to anybody who has been through all of that. I understand. I really do. I really do. I'm not trying to minimize the seriousness of domestic violence. 
definitely not trying to minimize the threat, the seriousness, and the impact of domestic violence. Not at all. It's not what I'm trying to do. But we're gonna keep it a buck, nonetheless. You and I, we gonna keep, we gonna keep that, uh, we gonna keep it a stack. What would you do? We're talking about, uh, we're talking about, we're talking about, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about, we're, we're talking about, we, 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 we're talking about fleeing the scene of the crime or staying to report it. Stacy says, I witnessed my friend's boyfriend kicking her butt at the age of 17. I ran upstairs and got my mama. You know what? Now we got to figure out was going to go get your mama reporting it. Maybe so. I think that's a little bit more acceptable around the way than calling the cops. Go get somebody else who can help. Get somebody local. Get somebody who 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 is respected to to, to step in. That's what that's kind of how we've been taught to do. We see our neighbors, we see our friends, we see our family members duking it out. We ain't quick to pick up that phone. As a matter of fact, we might look at we might look at somebody who's quick to 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 call the cops. We might be looking at them sideways like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. But Stacey, as you can see, you were talking about your friend was only 17 years old. She got a whole lifetime in, in front of her. So if she's already getting her, her butt kicked at, at age 17, it ain't looking good. Oh. You said he was whooping her butt and she wasn't fighting back. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's bad. I'm going to have to, yeah. We don't like to hear about stuff like that. But it's our reality for many, for many of us. For many of us, that's our reality. I don't like it. You don't like it. We don't like it. Nobody likes it. But for for many of us, that's exactly what we what we're staring down the barrel of. We're staring right down the barrel of domestic violence, local violence. It's not always the easiest decision of whether to get involved with that or not. It's not always an easy decision. You might have to really think about it for a minute. So what's the decision for you? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Stacy says, I didn't sign up for domestic for domestic department. I'm the type of woman I'm not having none of that. You mean you didn't sign up for domestic violence? So a man put his hands on you. You going to put your hands back on him? We throwing hands, y'all. We having a hand party. I'm about to make hand turkeys out of your face. You remember that? Hand turkeys. You trace your hand. <laughs> this is the turkey head. Your thumb was the turkey head. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. He says, I'm out the door. I don't blame you. 
I don't. As a matter of fact, in on that yeah it's not a good look but i'm wondering i'm wondering about your your uh your friend at 17 years old i wonder if that was her the the last time she had ever been a victim of domestic violence i wonder Because unfortunately, 90 seconds. many people who go through that go through it time and time again. They go from one abusive relationship to another abusive relationship. It's terrible, y'all. It's terrible. Terrible, I tell you. Last time I heard, she liked that boy. So, mm. you know, many many of us who grow up watching that, grow up watching that, we don't take it as seriously. Even though we know the hurt, the crying, the pain, the emotion, and all of that, we uh, it's just part of our lives. We we might even make ourselves believe that everybody goes through that. It ain't just us. It's not a, just our family. It ain't just me. It ain't just you. It ain't just us. It ain't just we. Everybody goes through that. But would you would do? Oh, are, what would make you call the cops as far as domestic violence is concerned? Would they have to go too far in your mind? Whatever that means. Whatever that means. Would they have to go too far? What is going too far in your mind as far as domestic violence is concerned? I know I'm pressing y'all about this. But I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Domestic violence, Shane. She love that boy. So, so yeah. All right. So, so let's say, let's say you went on a job with somebody. You went on a job with somebody. Let's say y'all went on a contracting job. Y'all supposed to put in, y'all supposed to put in a bathroom uh tile the floors uh, um fix the walls put a, a sheet rock this rock the ceilings and the walls and all of that kind of stuff do some um drywall finishing uh redo a bathroom a kitchen put in a put in a new put in a new countertop sink sink um sink countertop cutting board you know all, all that stuff Y'all going in here to do this job for, for these people. And this is how much money y'all going to get. Well, you go in there and you mess up something in the house while y'all fixing up the house. Now, since y'all contractors, you should be able to fix whatever you break. But maybe you broke something that you couldn't really fix. Like maybe you broke something um, like maybe taking out, maybe taking out the uh, the sink. Taking out a sink, you either you messed up a pipe, you bust the pipe. Now it's water all over the floor. Y'all turned the water off, but it took a while for y'all to find the shutoff valves that, to cut the water off. And now you done made damage. You done. What do you do? Do you try to? clean things up the best way as possible or do you go to 
the owner of the house, tell them what happened, and get it reduced from the bill. It might be a situation where you wasn't getting paid all that much anyway. You you took the bid on the low, low. You bid low so you could get this job. So you could beat out the competition. Show them what you got. And, and, one, and somebody in your crew that messed up. Floored all over this, 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 this lady's floor. Or this man's floor. Or this family's floor. Got to go get the wet vac. Try to vacuum up all this water, but it's water. You know what I mean? You know how much that now you know, messed up this uh, messed up the uh messed up the ceiling downstairs or something like that. Here y'all are trying to trying to fix the ceiling below. Like why why y'all why y'all cutting out? I didn't ask y'all to fix that ceiling. Well, now you gotta spill the beans. You got to spill the beans. Well, you know, what happened was, what had happened was, and now you're looking bad because you tried to fix something before you reported what, what happened. Now they're looking at you uh, like, and, and asking themselves if they can trust you. Dude, does this contractor really know what they're doing? Do they know what they're doing? I'm not so sure they know what they're doing. They came in here to fix my house and they messing up my house worse than it was. You know how people get. You know how people get. Next thing you know, they saying stuff like, that's why, that's why, you know, that's why I don't be wanting to, um, that's why I don't be, be dealing with black people. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> That's why I don't be dealing with black people. The white man come in my house. They come in there. They fix what's supposed to be fixed. They, they don't be like these jack legs. You let these jack legs come in. And, and and mess your house up. Y'all know you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. So that's what we that's what we uh, are dealing with sometimes when we talk about these situations. Whether to flee the scene or to stay and report it. You might have, when y'all went in to do that contracting job, you might have let your wife or your your girlfriend, you know, somebody's somebody's son. Well, you know, man, we want to keep him off the street, so we let him come work with us. You let him come work with us, and now he done messed up everything for us. He ain't mean to. He didn't mean to. It ain't like he was drinking on the job or he was high or or he wasn't paying attention. In a way, it's kind of our fault. We gave him something to do that we hadn't trained him yet yet for. Well, he, he said he knew how to do it. So instead of making sure that he knew how to do it first, we let him go ahead and do it. And now look. Take a look at me now. Well, it's just an empty space. There's nothing left here to remind me. Just a memory of your face. All right. Anyway. He messing up the money. And we telling ourselves it's going to ruin the bag. As he says, I've been blessed so far, or should I say lucky, that I haven't gone through that. No, that ain't luck. That ain't luck. We are all a product of the choices that we make. Oh, goodness gracious. 
Now, yeah, tr true indeed that anybody can be a victim of domestic violence. I'm not denying that. But the the real the real decision is about whether you whether you recognize what happens and and what you do about it. Do you stay in an abusive situation or do you get on up out of that um, abusive situation? Or were you talking about you went on a contracting job and and, and messed up somebody <laughs> and messed up the messed up the bag? You ever mess up the bag, Stacy? Don't mess up the bag, baby. Whatever you do, keep the bag intact. Keep the bag intact. Whether what the heck? Uh, fleeing the scene of the crime. Or staying to report it. Everybody around the way calling me a snitch. Ain't this a mess? Everybody calling me a snitch because I told what I saw. I seeped. What I seen, and I told what I told. Make sure y'all hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. We're talking about fleeing the scene of the crime versus staying to report it. What would you do? What would, what would you do? You dented that person's car. Scratch they ride. Your kids, your kids broke a window playing baseball or throwing rocks, being bad. Your neighbors next door be fighting like cats and dogs. Do you call the cops? Do you look the other way? Do you mind your business? When is it time to mind your business? When is it time to mind your business? That ain't none of your business, fool. That ain't none of your business. No, it ain't. That ain't none of your. That ain't none of y'all's business. That ain't none of y'all's business. What's it gonna be? We about to get on the body here, y'all. We about to get on the body here. But we had to. We had to. We had to work this out today. We had to work this out today. And uh, you know, talk about this this here topic. Um, let's get ready to do these birthday shout outs. We, 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 we. Oh, now wait a minute. All right, we'll, we'll get into that. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. September 10th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business up acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Digger Richburg, happy birthday to you. And Thomas Gauntney. Or should I say Gothney turning 52 years old today? And Ruth Almonte, happy birthday to you. And Oletan Omalayo Ayo Demeji, happy birthday to you. And Joester Bercy turning 63 years old today. And Cicely Carr, happy birthday to you. And Tasha Neek Hamilton turning 36 years old today. And my man, Eshawn Wilson, going all the way back to the 1991-92, turning 51 years old today. And last but not least, Tracy McKinnon Pickens, turning 55 years old today. I want to say happy birthday to all of y'all. 
and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, 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 glorious September 10th. I hope that today finds you good health, happiness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. All of y'all go ahead and turn up. Turn up, but don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. A rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind, and any, 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 anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and remember, man. Sometimes you have to make the decision about whether you are going to go forward and report the report a crime or a mistake or an infraction or whatever, or whether you just got to get on the body here. I, my, my name is Bennett. I ain't in it. I ain't seen it. I ain't mean it. I ain't going out like that. I will see y'all next time. As a matter of fact, I didn't see nothing. I won't see you again. You not come around here. My friend, I, 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 staying alive, staying alive. I'm, 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 I'm fleeing the scene all night long. All right, John. All right. Thanks for coming through, y'all. I appreciate it. Like I said, make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. Resuscitate y'all. Love y'all right back to life. So, so tomorrow we will not have a show. Tomorrow kicks off the NFL, and the Eagles are playing at 1 o'clock, so we're going to do it like that. Going forward, though, we're going to have to make some decisions. We're going to have to make some decisions, and I'll be right back at y'all with those decisions that we're going to make. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, y'all. So, all right. Blog Talk, let me get you on the pot of here. Let's say holla, holla, holla. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. And Goodbye. for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace, y'all.